In this little bonus section, I'm going to show you how you can start using ChatGPT with visual inputs. Why GPT-4 is able to make image inputs through the API and plugins, the native ability is still lacking a bit. So what we'll do is take one of those plugins and start using it in our own workflows. This way we can start experimenting with this feature before it's officially released. In the future, this section will be changed then to reflect the native features that ChatGPT Plus has planned for the visual input. In this section, we'll be making use of the Scene Explain plugin. The Scene Explain plugin we can find just by going to the, of course, we have to select the plugins and then we can go to the plugins, click on this little drop down and select the plugin stores. In here, we can just type in Scene and then we find already Scene Explain. This plugin allows you to analyze images and generate descriptive texts about these images. This text can be useful then for various purposes, such as understanding the content of an image and also generating some prompts for generative projects or even some AI art generation. To use this plugin, you of course need to install it. So this is what we are going to do. Then once this has been installed, we can now just go ahead and use it to get descriptions and interact with some images. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to this website, Pixabay, where there are a lot of royalty free images. For example, I like this image and therefore I'm going to select it. And now if I want to interact with exactly this image, I right click on it and I go to copy image address. So like this, I get the URL of this image because this is how this plugin works. So once this has been, of course, we need to make sure that this is actually activated. We can then, for example, write, create a description about this image. I'm going to paste in just this link and then I hit enter and this will then trigger this plugin. And for example, I can say, please create a list of keywords related to this image. And like this, we get immediately a list of these keywords that we, for example, could use in the description, or we can of course also think of other applications related to this image. So this is the most basic way of using this plugin, but we can also interact with our own images. The easiest way to do this is go to a free image hosting website, like for example, postimages.org. And in here, I will upload a image. For example, I'm going to select this image that I have generated in Bing chat by using DALI. And we will learn how this works in another section of this course, but I can now directly use this image link. This should be the JPEG format. So I'm just going to copy this. And again, I'm saying, give me a description of this image. And after a little while, we get this description of this image. Now we have to be aware that this might not always be 100% accurate, but for sure this will further improve in the future. And I think actually that this is not so bad at all. So we have the bottom part of the image shows a room that has been flooded with water. And in general, it's like a dream. So you can see that this is uh, with a specific tone also. And we can now further interact. For example, we could say, please create a creative story around this image. And now we can see that this will create a story around the image that we have used in our case. And of course, with this plugin, there can be also a number of different use cases. Some of them include understanding the content of an image when you have limited context. We can also generate writing prompts or creative ideas for image generations. 
And then we see with this prompt that we now get a story about this image. Of course, this plugin can be used in a number of different use cases. Some of them include understanding the content of an image, generating writing prompts or creative ideas based on this image description. Of course, we can also use it for AI art generation by providing text prompts that would represent an image. So we can use this description and generate some images based on this description. And as we have seen in here, we can also use it for descriptions and content creation, including some kind of storytelling. So overall, I think this can be a pretty useful feature. And of course, as always, I encourage you to try it out, play with some variation so that you can also include it in your workflow. That's it for this section of the course. I hope that you have learned a lot about GPT plus and what are the features that it has to offer. Hope it was helpful and see you in the next section.